Hey everybody, today I wanted to do a little video on the controller because I believe the controller can be your best friend or it can be your worst nightmare depending on what you know about it. So I've got a few little stages set up that we'll go through and how the controller works. So obviously this is a controller and this is a little door. I want to make this swing open to enclosed. Okay, so obviously in order to use a bearing, we have to use a controller. You can't connect a button to a bearing, so you have to go through a controller. Now when you connect a controller to a bearing, it will automatically put that bearing and the blocks connected to it in the position that you built it. So I built this in that position, basically. So like I say, if I hammer this around, as soon as I connect it, it will go to its natural position. So we have to connect the switch to the controller in order to use it. Job's done. Nothing works. Okay. So two things when dealing with controllers and bearings. This. You see how there's two directional arrows. You have, depending on your eyesight, a green or a blue, which goes one way, and a red that goes the other way. Now this is in the controller. Let's look at it like red is negative and the green blue is positive. So for me, I want this door to swing backwards. So in order to do so, I want the bearing to turn towards the red. So what we've got to do is look in our controller. Now initially you might think, well, if I put a value in this very first column, that'll be what, what happens, right? Well, that's not entirely true. So with the button being off, nothing's happening, it is in the off position. If I go into the controller and put my value in the very first block, minus 90 because we want it to open by 90 degrees, you see how it's now moved even though it was in its off position? So what happens is, is that very first line is where you want the position to be when the system is off. So for me, I want it back flat normal. I want it there. So that very first column at this minute in time, we're not going to touch. We don't need to touch that. What we're then saying is, nothing is happening when the circuit is off. When I press the switch, I want it to go 90 degrees in the negative direction. So our switch is off. So our bearing is at the zero. And when I click the switch, it goes 90 degrees backwards. That's really easy, right? It's nice and simple, nothing too stressful. When I turn it off, it returns back to normal. When I open it, it goes to 90 degrees. Okay, cool, simple, easy to understand. What happens if we've got two bearings? Very same door, the blue is exactly the same. I mean, this time we've got another bearing up here, our bearing number two. Now, I want the blue to open as before, but then I want the yellow to also swing. So we, to do that, we need to go in our controller and we need to take a note of our direction. So again, we want the blue blocks to move in the red direction. And we want the yellow blocks to move in the green-blue direction, I think. So we need number two to be positive and number one to be negative. So if we go into our controller, we want number one to be negative. And I'll show you here, if I put number two to be positive 90 in the same column, they will both move at the same time when I press the circuit. Okay, but because that second one moves, because that yellow moves at the same time, you might not actually catch it. Because it just stays flat. So watch this. So we'll leave that second one a zero, and then we'll put it on the next column along here. So what we're saying is, when the circuit is off, bearing number one, don't do anything. Immediately after we flick the switch, turn to 90 degrees. When at 90, stay at 90. Number two, what number two does is when the circuit is off, don't do anything. For the first tick, still don't do anything. So what happens here is, this first column will only move bearing one, then bearing number two, I want the second one to move. This might make sense. So what this will do, this will step it. So you'll get one rotation first, and then you'll get the second rotation. Okay, so the blue blocks will swing back first and then the yellow block. So it'll all go back together and then the yellow block turns. So you can use the controller to kind of sequence events if you like. You can make them happen based on where you put them in the rotation editor. 
Let's have a look at number three. So number three, this is a piston. So ultimately we've got a doorway here, but our doors constantly open. When the piston is in the off position, obviously it is right up close. But I want the piston to shut the door. So all we've got to do is literally connect the piston to the controller. And this is what it looks like inside. So it's all zeros. So I need the piston to move four to shut my door. So I go into my controller and again, I will move this one. I won't move this one because this is in the off position. So I'll move this one, number four. So now when I flick my button, my door closes and it will stay closed until I turn it off. And then it returns. The reason why it stays closed is because this whole entire length is number four. Okay. So remember the very first column when the switch is off, do this. When the switch is on, do this. Okay. So when it is off, be it zero. When it is on, extend to four. But what happens if you want a door that is closed? So here we have our door that is constantly closed. As you can see, our pistons are fully extended. So remember before when I was saying in the controller, what you want the piston to do or a bearing to do when it is in the off position, you need to put first. So for this door, I need those pistons to extend by three in order for the door to be closed. So my door is closed because the pistons are extended by three, the switch is off. Then if you look, we're asking the pistons, when the position is off, be extended by three blocks. Then when I flick the switch, go to zero. So circuit is off, piston is extended to three, door is closed. If I press the switch, piston goes to zero, my door is open and I can walk on through. When I close my door, it'll reset back to zero. Makes a lot of sense. So that's when you can start doing fancy stuff. So we see what happens with pistons and bearings. Now this is a bit of a, a sequence. Basically, I want this block here to rotate one big sort of rotation, but I want a sequence of events to happen with all of this stuff first. And I've got it all set up and I'll just play it and you'll see what happens. Piston goes up, door opens, legs extend, block rotates. Okay, eventually that will stop. Now if I undo it, or turn it to the off position, what happens is it does everything again, but in reverse. So this block will reverse back round, this legs will close in, this door will close, and the piston will drop. It looks like this. Block rotates in the opposite direction. Legs close down, door closes, piston drops. And this is very simply done in the controller. It looks a bit scary here, no doubt, because I've got six things going on. It looks like this. My number one is my piston. My number two is that big section that opens. Three, four, and five are those little leg sections. And number six, the rotation of all this. Now in the controller, I've simply done this. You just look at each element one at a time and it's easy to know what you're doing. So first things first, I want my piston to extend. So I go, when my switch is off, I want my piston at zero. When I click the switch, I want my piston to activate. And my piston will activate for the entire duration. Then I say, okay, so once my piston is activated, I want my piston to go to the top first before my door opens. So remember when we had the two bearings, we have the first one activate in the first column and the second one activate in the second column. It's exactly the same here. So piston is at zero. Switch is turned on. Piston goes to three. Bearing number one. This is ironically number two. Flick our switch. Do nothing. Second phase. Do nothing whilst the piston is extended. Then go by 90 degrees. Okay. So if we just look at those two elements. We turn the switch on, the piston goes up, then that door opens, turn on, piston goes up, then that door opens. Okay, so that is what happens when you split them apart. If we decided to put the bearing and the piston in the same column, 
the piston will go up as that door opens. Exactly the same time. See? We'll go to this side. The door swings as the piston drops. Okay? So you can sequence your events in the controller that helps you make mad things. You just got to know what you're doing, take your time to work it out, and use simple thought process of look at your columns. The very first column is when the circuit is off, do this. So at the minute, everything for me is set to zero. I don't want anything to be in a different position when the circuit is off. When I press my button, first of all, I want my piston to activate. Then I want that second bearing to activate. Then I want that third bearing to activate. So everything down the line happens one at a time. So that helps you sequence events. And once you've realized that you can sequence events and you can make things happen one at a time, you're able to make strange and bizarre contraptions. Just as an example of using a controller to sequence events, I've got a strange door mechanism in front of me that is all hooked up to a controller in order to sequence its opening. And it's simply this. Pistons withdraw, a bearing rotates, unlocking the door. Then obviously the locking mechanism has to move out of the way and the doors have to open. And finally, the floor has to drop letting us through. Again, these are all individual elements that you work out one at a time and work out your spacing. So I want the pistons to activate first in order for the doors to slide back. The doors need to slide back so that this lock can get out of the way. It's just sequences. The best thing about controller is it replays your events in exactly the reverse order when you close it. Does that make sense? Hopefully. And finally, our last thing with controllers, a controller lets you loop something. So right here, we've simply got a piston and a button and a controller, and I'll set it up. We connect the piston and the button to the controller, and then we'll go in here. And we'll say, because it's going to loop, I'm going to do a few things. What we want to do is have our piston start at zero when the circuit is off. When I click the button, go all the way to the top. Then what I want it to do is go to the bottom. And then what I want it to do, go to six blocks high, then return to the bottom. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to do it slowly so it's easier to see. But I'm going to loop this. For now, this is just as it is. There's no looping involved. This will just be the piston will go up to 15, drop down to zero, up to six, drop down to zero. That's all it will happen. I'll do it on the switch. So this is a normal controller. Up to 15. Down to zero. Up to six. Back down to zero again. And that's where it will stop. And then if we turn it off, it will do that backwards. So we'll go to six. Down to zero. Up to 15. And finally rest at six again. That's a simple controller. That's a normal controller. Now what we're going to do is ask it to loop that. So what will happen is it will just continue to go through these phases. So now it's going to loop. We'll turn it on. It goes up to 15. Down to zero. Up to six. Down to zero. Up to 15. Down to zero. Up to six and back to zero. And it will continue to do this until we turn the circuit off. So we'll turn the circuit off and it simply goes back to its off position. So you can have a piston continue to loop through things if you need to do something automatically. It's that simple with the piston. Now a bearing. A bearing acts slightly different when you ask it to loop. So for argument's sake, Let's connect our bearing to our controller. And we'll ask it to do, we want the red to come up so we can see the red. So what we're going to say is, I want it to start so we can see that red block on top. So the reason that we changed that very first column is because this is what we want it to do when it is off. So when our circuit is off, I want that red dot up, okay? Then when I turn our circuit on, I want the red to come towards me. 
So when I turn that circuit on, I want the red to come towards me. There we go. The red faces me. And then go away. So that, again, is just a normal controller, okay? Now watch what happens when I put the controller on loop, and this is very important. So we're now on loop. I'll slow it down so we can see it. I'll turn it on. It comes to me 90. But then it keeps going again. Another 90. And then another 90. And then another 90. Uh, and another 90. So this might not be what you were expecting to happen. I will show you this in an easier way so you can see it each way. And remember, I'm only putting one value in. I'm only asking it to do it one at a time. And I strongly advise if you're going to do anything with loops and bearings and a controller, always change your values when everything is off because it will start going A-wire if you don't. So to show you again, when I turn the switch on, I'm going to have a little pause before we turn to 90, okay? Little pause, turn to 90. That is without looping. Turn it off. Now we'll loop it. Okay, so we've still got that little pause, so it will hopefully help us see what I'm talking about. So we'll turn it on. Pause turns 90. Then it will pause and then it will turn 90 again. Okay, then it will pause and turn 90 again. And it will keep doing this until I stop it. And when I do stop it, it goes back to its kind of closest position, if you like, its last known position. This might be confusing because obviously with the piston, what happened was it went to its place and then went back to zero. A bearing doesn't work like that. A bearing doesn't go from 90 back to zero. See, we told it to just do 90 degrees. If you remember, we said, hey, we want you to turn 90 degrees. And then go back to zero, right? That, that's how it works. When the switch is off. So we turn it on. And now it doesn't want to do anything. Wait for the pause. Turn 90 degrees. Okay. And that's that's great. And we turn it off. We go back. Why then when we do a loop with the controller and bearing, does it almost spin round all the time? Well, it's quite simple. When a controller has a bearing of value of zero, you're basically asking that bearing not to do anything. So you're not telling it to go back to its original position. You're not telling it to move forwards. The reason why this loop keeps on moving forwards is because you're asking it to go 90 degrees from its last position. You're never asking it to return. Not once are we asking it to return it. So we can fix this quite easy. So what we're going to do is, so we're starting at 90. We're going to wait a minute. Then we're asking it to have the red dot faces. And then I'm going to send it backwards. Let's see how this works. So we'll loop this. So we pause. Red dot towards me. And then red dot should go back to top. Then red dot will pause and then come towards me. And go back to the top. So the thing with a controller and a loop and a bearing, if you want it to return to the position that it started in, you have to tell it to do so. You have to tell it to go back to its original position. Otherwise, it will keep adding that 90 degrees. So if we go back into this controller and turn this off, what we're basically saying is, yo, start where we tell you to start. Pause, rotate 90 degrees. And then it will go, okay. And then I'll pause and rotate 90 degrees because that's what you're asking it to do. It only reads these values here. So we go, flick the button. Pause, rotate 90. Loops, pause, rotate 90. Loops, pause, rotate 90. Loops. So it's pause, rotate 90. Pause, rotate 90. Pause, rotate 90. Does that make any sense? Hopefully it does. I know it might be a bit of an idiot's guide. I might, there might be people out there who've got like better understandings of controllers and stuff. But this is kind of to help those people who don't really know. You start with one little bearing and a switch, turning it off and on, and you can step up so you can have things happen at different times. You can introduce pistons. So when a piston is closed and then you press the button and it opens, or you can 
learn how to start a piston so that it's open so that your piston is extended so your door for example is closed and then your door opens when you press the button and then it helps you learn how to sequence events that can happen one after the other and then there's a little bit on the looping systems of pistons i hope that helps you guys it's hopefully something that will help a little bit of understanding and maybe help you guys make those weird and wonderful objects you do thank you for watching i shall hope to see you again Bye for now.